today we will be doing three different uh, sections uh, during our formal lecture. So we will discuss uh, background and significance part of your research strategy. We will briefly discuss uh, the use of the uh, referencing software called EndNote, and we'll do some uh, demo uh, with this software during our class. And then uh, we conclude our in-class activity with uh, the exercise for writing or drafting, I should rather say, of the uh, background and significance uh, section for our example proposal. So um, there are several uh, scientific parts of the proposal, uh, of NIH proposal, I should say. So the requirements vary uh, by agency, but NIH requires something on the order of a, of a dozen of different scientific documents. And some of those we already uh, discussed and uh, drafted. So for example, we drafted summary or abstract. Uh, we also worked on specific aims. And as you learned, these are separate documents that we have to prepare and then submit as a package. Uh, so a research strategy is kind of like the next big document on our list. Uh, for typical NIH proposal, which is called R01, or like a, a real, genuine, large NIH proposal, the research strategy is limited to 12 pages. So it's, it's quite a bit of a write-up. Uh, in case of smaller uh, uh, or exploratory uh, NIH proposal, which is uh, typically called R21, the research strategy is limited to six pages, so everything is basically scaled back, so to speak. Uh, the minimum font size requirement is size 11. Uh, Arial font size is kind of suggested, uh, and the figures, of course, should be eligible, uh, but it's okay to make you know, font size smaller in figures, which we will be discussing uh, separately. The minimum margins uh, requirements for the NIH is 0.5 inches. Uh, and then another section, which, uh, which or another document, I should say, and here's the typo, it's not really uh, uh, listed correctly, uh, is the references cited. And this section is not part of the research strategy formally, meaning it doesn't count toward the 12 page limit. So strictly speaking, you can have as many references as you like. Typical, in typical proposal, uh, you really should be expecting 30 to 100 literature citations for R01 proposal. For R21, this may be a slightly smaller number, but once again, there is no limit on the number of references uh, that you cite in your proposal. And obviously, you do want to substantiate the points that you discuss in your proposal with literature references if they're available. So in the context of your proposal, which is really inspired by the NIH style, uh, you will be writing uh, 10 pages uh, in length. Uh, the suggested font size that Mary Kay and I uh, indicate uh, is Arial, either size 11 or 12. Uh, the page margins that you should follow, which again is listed uh, in, uh, in the departmental documents, uh, is one inch. So please use these formal requirements for the preparation of the documents. Uh, and again, you will have similar sections as those uh, in the NIH uh, document. So, however, there will be some slight modifications, obviously, because your proposal is going to be slightly shorter. So for the background and significance, you really should plan for something like four uh, plus minus one pages. Again, depending on where you will stick some of the uh, information that will be relevant to your study. Uh, innovation, uh, which we will be discussing later, is a smaller section, uh, which is literally a quarter to half a page. Uh, and we really would like you to spend most of your write-up uh, on the approach section, where you spend two to three pages per each specific aim, depending on how many aims you have. Uh, and again, a, a relatively small section on the future directions, which is again, a quarter to a half of a page. So the reason why I'm uh, giving you uh, this overview is really to emphasize where we start with today's section, which is background and significance. This is the beginning of research strategy. Uh, document. Uh, it, uh, this is where you start. And again, you should remember that significance is one of the key uh, reviewing criteria at NIH. So uh, significance, uh, or the, the definition of significance is uh, the positive effect of uh, something that is uh, likely going to have on other things. So again, uh, in the context of the proposal, uh, the goal of the significance section is to really justify the need of your idea or your proposal uh, to exist. Uh, why the funding agency 
uh, should be realizing that this proposal is so significant that it should be funded, whether it advances the field of medicine, whether uh, in your case, because uh, some of you are writing proposals on materials, whether it advances the field of materials, uh, what impact it will have. So again, in the context of what you're gonna be writing, don't limit yourself by the NIH uh, goals, so to speak. Uh, it's okay to write uh, uh, the importance uh, or the significance related to uh, material significance, not necessarily to health. Uh, the reason why, again, we're using NIH format is because uh, this is the largest funding agency. And uh, uh, how you accomplish uh, the goal of justifying the need for your proposal to be funded, funded should really be consistent with the purpose of the proposal. And we'll discuss this on the specific examples uh, of different ways of doing things. So. What I usually recommend is, uh, or where you should really start is, uh, you should really start with preparing a bullet outline of uh, key points that you should be discussing uh, in this piece of write-up, which is you know about four pages. It's, it's, it's a relatively significant uh, writing exercise. So don't start uh, you know, drafting the text from scratch. Start with a detailed outline um, and really, you know, this gives you an idea of how many sections you're going to have, which sections uh, you will have. Uh, you at this stage, uh, this is where you may be thinking, "Oh, this is something that I should be discussing first. This is something that I should be discussing later." Uh, this is where you kind of check for the flow of the ideas. So, uh, in the next phase, you really expand your key points into sentences, uh, which will eventually be converted into smaller subsections. So again, the recommended size for these uh, subsections is somewhere around like 0.5 to point, uh, to three quarters of a page. Uh, why is that? Well, you know, if you're writing some, uh, a very, very long um, subsection, uh, the reviewers will likely lose their focus by the time they will be reading the end of your section. Moreover, as you're trying to convey the idea, like for example, you're reviewing part of the uh, particular uh, research field, uh, it's very convenient for the reviewer to be able to have this information on exact same page and not be able to flip back and forth. In case if you're going to have graphical element, uh, you know, it should really go along with that uh, section of the write-up. So this is one of the critical reasons, you know, why uh, these subsections should really be between half to three quarters of a page uh, in general. All right, uh, uh, moving on to uh, the next slide. So. Uh, in general, um, when you think about background and significance, you're really thinking maybe like about really two parts uh, because it's like background and significance. So that's fairly obvious. But in reality, uh, there are significantly uh, more things that you should be discussing in this section. So obviously, uh, you know, where you're going to start or part of what you're going to be doing during uh, this section is you will be doing, uh, you will be performing critical review of the background or a critical review of the literature. Uh, you will be providing the statement of significance, discussing why your uh, project is significant. Uh, but you should also, what you should also be doing, you should also be champion uh, uh, and discussing the benefits of your proposal if the goals will be accomplished. Uh, why is that important? Well, the reader and the reviewers should really, you really should educate the reviewer why, uh, what kind of benefits your proposal would bring to the society if the goals would be accomplished. Don't leave these for the reviewers to guess. Uh, you really should articulate them very clearly and in detail. And that's, that's our job in, uh, while we are writing the background and significant section. Um, so the first part, not necessarily the first part, but, but you know, the background part, uh, this is the part which provides critical review and analysis of literature with the goal of expanding of what was only briefly mentioned in the specific aim section. So remember in the, our specific aim section, uh, we had sentences uh, with something like, well, based on the previous studies and sometimes we we're trying to cite some references, uh, this and that is known. So this is the part where you actually expand on this, where you go into more details and you educate your reviewer who could be completely ignorant of your field because uh, 
he or she did not uh, encounter this field before. So be able to educate your reader from the very basics, uh, or you educate your reader uh, in this section uh, to gain knowledge about this particular area of uh, science, medicine, and so on and so forth. Uh, so another uh, critical element here is uh, here you're providing more details uh, about the need and the gap in field. So all the key ideas that we had in this in, uh, in this in, uh, in specific aims here we're kind of expanding on them. So here we will be discussing our gap uh, one more time, but in a significantly greater details. This is the place where we cite references where we state explicitly what, what is the gap in field in case if we need to provide additional clarifications, this is where it happens. So by no means we're trying to replicate things from specific aims, we're really trying to expand on things. Uh, we also describe why this gap is important to be addressed. Again, we don't leave anything uh, to the imagination of the reader or the reviewers, we really have to guide the reader through your text and explain why this is important, or in other words, why addressing this gap is significant. So this is kind of leading to the uh, uh, next uh, section. Uh, in the nutshell, background is where you uh, review primary literature that substantiates and validates uh, that there is an important problem that exists. Uh, and what I recommend is to finish this section with the contribution sentence. Uh, and the suggested language for this sentence uh, is something like, the contribution of the proposed research is expected to be, and here you can list, uh, list what you're developing, whether this will be new knowledge, new uh, blockers for th some pathways, new materials that you will design, uh, new ways to make energy, new ways to uh, deliver medicine, so on and so forth. So in our case, when we're writing our proposal that uh, we're doing for the in-class activity, this will obviously be uh, the new detection technology for COVID-19. Uh, one thing which is which you find difficult as you're going to be writing um, is redundancies because you could be discussing um, different parts of literatures uh, and sometimes you may find yourself well I'm, I'm kind of discussing the same point over and over again so please do try to minimize the potential redundancies in uh, in your write-up and this is this is challenging so with this I'd like to kind of switch over to a few examples uh, uh, of these uh, sections. And this is an example of the proposal which is available from the uh, National Institute of Health. Uh, and this is the beginning of the proposal. This is the first page. And here the authors start with significant statement to begin with. So again, uh, on, on, in my previous slide, uh, this is where we kind of uh, want to see uh, that there is a gap in the field. And uh, I would like to, excuse me, I would like to briefly uh, briefly go over the beginning of this page here. Oops, excuse me. Uh, so for in this proposal, the authors discuss that, um, discuss a particular uh, strain of bacteria, Staphylococcus aurelius, uh, and say, they say that it's a part of, uh, of, of microflora, uh, which exists in 30% of the population. Uh, they discuss the fact that this is uh, something that exists every day in, in everyday life, but uh, due to some, well, and they also discuss that for some reasons, uh, uh, medical reasons, uh, it is possible for this bacterium to become uh, uh, an infection, and they really introduce the gap in field here uh, by stating that such infections have only become more lethal with the emergence of antibiotic resistance, highly viral uh, with with emergence of highly viral and strains of um, Staphylococcus aurelius that can strike down healthy individuals. So they really try to argue why this is an important problem. And then they say, as an illustration, in 2005, there were over uh, 278,000 MRSA-related MRSA hospitalizations and uh, estimates place uh, this disease uh, death rates at over 18,000 per year in the United States, which is nearly as many as AIDS, tuberculosis, and vi viral hepatitis combined. So they're really trying to argue that this is an important problem that they will be addressing within, within the scope of this proposal. Okay, so, uh, excuse me, hmm, interesting. My slides don't switch. Uh, 
that's the same page which is enlarged. And another point that I kind of want to highlight here is again this proposal. Uh, in this proposal, what you see there are uh, there are subsections of backgrounds and significance. And for example, this section lasts approximately uh, half a page. Uh, this section um, so it's approximately one quarter of a page here, and maybe maybe three quarters of another half a page here. So combine this is three quarters of a page that we were discussing. So again, these are smaller, uh, relatively small sections, half to three quarters of a page each. So the next part that we will be doing uh, in the background and significant uh, section is you will be doing statement of significance. This is the part where you clearly uh, and directly state uh, why the proposed research contribution is important. So in the previous slide, what you saw is uh, actually, hold on a second, we didn't get to that point. Uh, and here you discuss the positive impact of your research, uh, what would change uh, if you would be successful. Uh, and significance is, again, one of the critical review criteria that uh, NIH has. So you really need to do a very good job at explaining why your proposal is significant. You could have a perfect uh, research strategy, but in case if you don't articulate why this is an important problem, why this is significant uh, to deal with, your proposal will likely going to be scored poorly. So the suggested language that I propose here is uh, you should write something like this contribution will be significant because, and then you provide the statement, what's, go, what's, what's going to go here. So in case of our uh, example proposal, we will say something like this proposal will be significant because it will enable doctors with uh, on-site high throughput methods to detect uh, COVID-19 without PCR multiplication. So again, this sentence, as I say, must be specific and descriptive. It cannot be very general because uh, if you're making something general, uh, the reviewers may imagine anything they like, and that's not what you want. Uh, finally, you conclude uh, this background and significant section with a clear and direct discussion of the benefits that will come as a result of your research outcomes, whether these are just advancements in the field, science is important, uh, whether this, these are, this is something tangible, for example, decrease, decreased morbidity or improvement in medical outcomes. You do want to discuss all of these things. In case if you may have something as an indirect outcome, uh, such as what we call fringe benefits, the, the, these, these benefits should also be claimed. Uh, you really should educate the reader uh, what would be the benefits of, of, this, of this research. So uh, again, this is an example of the proposal from the NIH. And what you see here uh, is kind of like the ending paragraph of the backgrounds and significance section. Uh, and the way the authors end uh, this section is, uh, uh, they develop some molecule, and here they say that uh, they discuss the potential of AGR as a therapeutic target. So they bring the attention that they that whatever the advances that they will be making, they can potentially make a therapeutic target uh, based on the science that they will be performing. So again, they don't really articulate things super clearly here, but they really bring the reader or the experts to the point that they potentially may develop uh, some therapeutics or the research that they will be uh, developing will lead to some therapeutics. And they end the sen uh, uh, section with the statement that this work will form the basis for additional screening and chemical efforts. So again, this is something that works as a uh, description of benefits that this, uh, that this proposal will bring. Uh, one common mistake is to kind of mix and match uh, uh, background, I'm sorry, significance and innovation. And uh, I always struggle with, with this distinction, but you really should do a great job at distinguishing what is uh, significance and what is innovation. So uh, for example, the mistake that these, in my opinion, uh, authors make is uh, they discuss uh, whatever is gonna potentially come out as tangible outcomes uh, in the innovation section, whereas this part, which is underlined, should really go to significant section, in my opinion. So try to avoid uh, avoiding these mistakes. Uh, so this is the end of uh, this presentation. Do we have any 